Maybe it's the soldiers that are coming to talk to us. So he all along, after the miners had been killed and after Tindup's dream, he sort of assumed that the whites would come and, you know, they would make a lot of noise and they would argue and carry on and they would have a some kind of a powwow and come to some agreement and maybe turn over the guilty Indians and it would all be over. He never imagined what was coming. The first soldiers to arrive at the camp on the Bear River were under the command of a major named Edward McGarry. And he was a, he was kind of uh, Colonel Connor's battle ax. Whenever he had somebody he wanted punished, he would send McGarry out because McGarry was a very violent and uh, very aggressive soldier. And Colonel Connor was at the time a few miles away from the camp, bogged down in the snow trying to get there. They had some, some cannons, some mountain howitzer they were trying to get over to the battlefield and their supply wagons were bogged down in the snow and Colonel Connor was trying to sort out that mess. So he sent Major McGarry ahead with uh, some of the cavalry troops, told him to get to the village and surround it so they couldn't escape. He was afraid that the Shoshone would would get away. And so McGarry got there in the dark, made his way down the river bluffs, there's steep bluffs on both sides of the river there, and made it across the river. But McGarry decided to attack. And the Shoshone had very little ammunition, so they were soon out of ammunition and uh, soon out of arrows and had no way to fight back. But the soldiers just kept pressing in and pressing in. And over the course of a couple of hours, they had. Uh, made it down into the camp itself and were just slaughtering the Shoshone wholesale. They were killing men, women, children, anybody they could find. They were just shooting them down. Uh, it, they were, at that point in the fight, were relying mostly on their handguns, their revolvers, to, because they were easier to handle in close quarters and they were just shooting every Indian they could find. Those Mormon witnesses were absolutely appalled by what they saw. They had no idea that this kind of uh, horrific violence was about to be perpetrated. The Mormons were quite uh, affected by the uh, General Connor and his and his group anyway, because he was a uh, he was uh, uh, somewhat anti-Mormon, and uh, and so they may have had a prejudice against him as, as the soldiers. The soldiers were, I guess, all out of California and were not uh, local people, so they would have been held with in some mistrust. Well, the body count at the Bear River Massacre is hard to pin down exactly because there were not too many accounts made at the time and accounts made later vary. Uh, but uh, Colonel Connor claimed that they killed 224 Indians. Well, the uh, the original report that Colonel Connor filed about this military engagement uh, fortunately survives. It is at National Archives in Washington, D.C. I was able to uh, obtain a copy of that some years ago. And uh, there, are, there are some elements of his account that are accurate, and there are many others uh, that are not. By pretty much any estimate of any of the major Indian uh, massacres in the West, the Bear River Massacre is far and away the, the worst. Bear River Massacre was the largest massacre in the Western United States. This morning I woke up and I looked out and how cold it was and I just imagined myself, I asked myself what it would be like for me to, to be forced out into the cold with my family, naked. Very, few clothes, very little clothing on, being fired off, upon, having to defend my family. Those people suffer incredible hardship, and they, to me, are my superheroes. They, they are superheroes to me. You people today, the Shoshone, the Northwest Band, are my heroes for being here. You're on January around January 31st or 30th of, uh, of uh, uh, 1863. And that during that time period, a short time period, a group of 
uh, Indians came through that had been shot up, up in the, on the Bear River. And they came through and it was, it was in the evening and it was a very cold winter and it was a very snowy winter. And it happened that as they came through, there was an, what we call an east wind blowing. I don't know if you're, you're familiar with the east winds that blow here in, in Kaysville and Farmington. And they're very often more intense coming right out of the mouth of Farmington Canyon. And as they went south in this very cold time, probably, uh, you know, below 20 degrees and uh, 60, 70 mile an hour wind coming out of the mountain, it was too cold for them to carry on. And the Indians, uh, according to the story, uh, went up to these rocks that are big, tall rocks and took shelter from the wind uh, in those rocks. And while they were there, uh, I don't remember the number, two or three or four of them passed away, died from their wounds or from exposure or a combination of the both. Old Northwestern Band, may your families increase as they awoke one day from a deep dream of peace and found the cavalry charging with bayonets held high. Kill every nit was their battle cry. They burned down the lodges, they scattered the food. The women were ravaged, their language, the language was crude. The children were running to escape their plight, while the elderly men waged a pitiful fight. The soldiers had cannons and rifles and shells, the Indians had arrows, and quickly they fell. It was freezing cold on that snow-laden path, as many ran for the river to escape the wrath. Five hundred Indians lay dead. On that massacre site, after the soldiers destroyed them with all their might, we remember and honor those who died and survived. January 29, 1863, for all who were once alive. May we always remember. Thank you. What we do here is every year we come here and we help the Shoshones and we help try and remember exactly what happened. And one of our long-term long goals is to get a plaque over there on the memorial changed from the Battle of Bear River to the Bear River Massacre to show it for what it truly was. And back behind me there are people hanging little trinkets on the tree to remember the Shoshones and to signify how many of them died. Every year we bring little donations and it's just a little Native American thing that we place on the tree just to remember they, that they did die for just standing up for themselves very much in tune with what these people, how these people lived. Although they are professional in nature, they still in their heart feel uh, much the way that the people felt 140 years ago. When a, a, a gratitude is shown to um, a member of the Anglo or 